You're listening to the Atlanta Dream Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to support this ministry, log on to www.dreamcenterchurch.com, where every dollar advances the kingdom of God. We hope that this message edifies and encourages you to do the great things God has called you to do. Today, we need to check something in you and me, and uh, we're going to check it with uh, one another. How many of you guys know it's important to be trustworthy? Anyone in here? This is how you build relationships. This is how you advance your life. This is how you do things, right? Without trust, you got nothing. You're going nowhere. You guys know what I'm talking about? How many of you guys know somebody who's always lying? Anyone in here know someone who's always lying? Man, I know people who are always lying, man. If you're looking at me, I've changed, okay? I changed yesterday. <laughs> and oftentimes, we're, we're looking for trustworthy people, but... The truth is, instead of looking for trustworthy people, you and I should be looking to be trustworthy. Now, there's, a, there's this thing that happens, and we call it in our group extreme ownership. It's me, my, my brother, Adili Nagao, Adili Kea. He's in the back. Have you guys seen Kids Church lately? It's off the chain. He's in the Kids Church right now doing it. He's dressed up like he's a circus ringleader. I love that dude. He got me a book called Extreme Ownership, and the whole book was basically this one concept. Stop blaming everybody else and start looking at yourself. That's what it came down to. And oftentimes, we're going around, man, I want to trust people more. I want to find people who are trustworthy. But did you know God's looking at you and asking the question, are you trustworthy? Are you someone that is reliable and dependable? So we're going to do a check today. We're going to check ourselves with one another. And then we're going to check and see if God trusts us. Now, I don't know if you know this, but God weighs you in his scales. He does. All throughout scriptures, we read all sorts of scriptures where God had someone in position and they screwed it up. And he removed them never to restore them back. Isn't that a scary thought? That's a scary thought to me too. So we're going to talk about these things today. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to have you open up right away. Right away, I want you to go straight to Matthew 5.37. We're not going to put it up on the screen yet, but that's going to be our first scripture. Now, trust comes in layers. And what I mean by that is that uh, I trust my mechanic to work on my car. I don't exactly trust him to watch my kids. You know what I'm saying? And trust comes in layers. And there's two different things, two areas that we trust people. We trust them in expertise, right? We trust a doctor to be a good doctor. We trust the dentist to actually tell us the truth about our teeth if you go to the dentist. We trust the the house sitter to take care of our home. We trust the dog sitter to take care of our dog. That's an expertise. But what we're talking about today is your character. Do you have the character of a trustworthy person? Now, I want you to look at your neighbor really quick. I want you to look at him. I want you to make a wild guess. Is that person trustworthy, you think? Don't tell him. Some of y'all mean. (laughs) So I looked at Mike, and I wanted to tell him right off, dude. So we're going to be talking about character. Do you have trustworthy character? Can I trust you? Can you trust me? There's a fight over there, a marriage fight already. There's trustworthiness. I'm just kidding. (laughs) They're fighting because she's wearing a saint's jersey. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's that saint's jersey will bring the devil out of everybody. <laughs> says this now. I just want to say this to you. Uh, can you be trusted? Can your character be trusted? What does it mean to be trustworthy? It means that you're reliable, you're dependable. Listen, we're standing in this building right now, and you know what's holding up our ceiling? These huge beams right here, look at these metal, it's crazy to me, these metal beams. You guys look at these things? If one of these fell right now, you're dead. I just want you to know that. There's no way you're living. But we're in this place trusting that these things are reliable. We could put weight on these things. We trust things that we could put weight on and and rely on. I want to ask you, are you reliable? Can people lean on you? This is what uh, I wrote down because we're going to check a few different areas. Are you dependable in your word? This is the first check we need to check in our lives. Is your word reliable? When someone is told, I said that wrong. When you say something to somebody, can they rely on it? Now, I want to stop for a second because this is the hardest one for me. Okay? How many of you have I said, I'll call you and never called you? You can raise your hand. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. My entire staff. That was embarrassing. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry, guys. This was a hard one. But in order to be trustworthy, you got to be trustworthy in your word. Can people trust what you say? When you make a commitment, do you have to make promises? Do you have to tell them over and over, trust me? Or is your yes a yes and your no a no? 
scriptures. I, I told you to go to Matthew 537. This is what it says. Jesus says, but let your yes be yes and your no be no for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. What? God's called you to be someone that when you say you're going to do it, you do it. Now, honest truth, how many of you guys feel like maybe that's the place where you have the hardest time? Anyone in here? You have to always change plans. You're always canceling on stuff. Okay, some of y'all aren't raising your hands, and I know personally, okay? <laughs> Micah, I'm just kidding. Hey, listen, this is how you stay honest and trustworthy in your word. Don't say yes to everything. Actually, my sister Maddie, she's in the back. She has a great, she has a great theory she lives by. Maddie, I use this now. I just want you to know. She said, I always start with no. First thing she says to me, I, I asked her, I, I can't remember what it was, Maddie. It was something simple, like you want to go to the gas station with me or something like that. And immediately she says, no. <laughs> it's like, all right, fine. I don't want to hang out with you either, you know? And she's like, how long are you going to be gone for? I said, about 15 minutes. She said, okay, I'll go. You know what she did? She kept her word pure. No, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Some of us are having a hard time saying no to people because we're too busy trying to please everybody but you're ruining your trustworthiness. Listen, man, I, 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 I could linger on this one for a long time because I think I'm just preaching to myself and you guys are just gonna watch me have my own altar call up here. But when you say something, is it real? When you tell a story, is it exaggerated? How many of you guys know an exaggerated storyteller? How many know they are the best storytellers in the whole wide world though, aren't they? They are the best story. I, when they tell a story, you're engaged, you can't believe it. There's a reason you can't believe it because it's probably not true. Is your commitment going to happen? Here's another one about your word. Who are you talking about? So when I talk about your word, I'm talking about the things that come out of your mouth. It says in the scriptures that your tongue is, is like a rudder to a boat. It could direct everything in your life. Your trustworthiness could be measured by what you talk about. Where your yes is, where your no is. How many of you guys love the juice, man? You got the tea. I don't know what people say anymore. How many of you guys just like gossip? Let's just call it out for what it is. Anyone in here like the gossip and slander? You're liars, okay? I know this. It is fun, man. That's what all of our television is based off of. Don't you know that? Like all reality TV is about slander and gossip, and we just eat that junk up, dude. I'm at Publix the other day, and the headlines were about Brad Pitt. I didn't know Brad Pitt was still in the headlines. Brad Pitt, is he good with his kids? I'm thinking, oh, I want to know, you know? <laughs> and the truth is, man, we, we, your trustworthiness is going to be measured by who you talk about and how you talk about them. There's a great scripture. I'll find it eventually. It's in my notes. <laughs> I didn't put it down, and I didn't have it up for you. In Proverbs, it talks about one who could keep a secret is trustworthy. One who would keep a secret is trustworthy. Now listen, I, I've, I've been erroneous in this a million times. I'll get a great secret from somebody, right? And it's so juicy, you know? It's like so good. And they're like telling me, and, you know, and, and especially when they're not crying about it, you know, they're kind of proud about it. You're like, oh my gosh. You know what the first thing I want to do? I want to go and tell Micah. You're Micah, dude, did you hear about Fabian? Hey, you know how he was acting a little weird at church? Let me tell you why. <laughs> but man, it says in scriptures, if you can't keep a secret, you don't have any trust. Your bank is empty. Now, I just want to say this to you really quick. People who talk to you about people, recognize they talk about you to people. Yay, yeah, man, on that? You guys know that? If you like eating up gossip, recognize that gossip's upon you too, okay? You can look so many amens on that. Y'all got people in your mind. This is another check. So number one, your word. Number two, your actions. Are you trusted with your actions? Men, what your eyes doing? Can I say that again? What are your eyes doing? I had a meeting the other day with someone. I was sitting with him, nice guy. He's not a Christian. Sitting with him, but every girl that walked by, guess what his eyes were doing? Immediately, I knew this man's not trustworthy with my children or my wife. Immediately, your actions, how are you acting? I want to make this clear, though. Not just acting in front of people, but what are your actions at home? This is a trust check. I want to see how trustworthy you are, and you need to start checking this in yourself. Are you trustworthy when no one else is looking? Do you preach one thing and act out a different thing? 
Your actions, what are you doing? What are you doing at your job? Y'all, some of y'all got some bad jobs, right? But did you know your trustworthiness isn't based on whether or not you have a good boss or not? Your trustworthiness is based on how you act in the midst of all those things. Next one, your skill set. How many of you guys got some skills? This is something we judge people on is your skill set. Some of y'all say you got skills and you ain't got no skills, all right? That goes back to word. <laughs> how many of you guys know someone who thinks they're skilled and they're not? I want to tell you about someone right now. Jonathan Huber sucks at basketball. I shut him down every Tuesday. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't think he's lost a game to me yet. I think maybe one game. I think he lost one game to me. That's it. Yeah, he's, he's shut me down. And lastly, the other measurement is your consistency. Are you consistent? This one's a big one. This one's a huge one. Listen, I, all of us could act a one way for a little bit. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? I, I work with a lot of people on the street all the time, man. Uh, we, we have all sorts of stuff. Isn't that right, Shelly? It's crazy. Oh, time, can I put a pause for us? Can I put, call a timeout? Dexter Jackson is up front, okay? But Shelly and Dexter Jackson are both on our team running the Love Hub, our, our transitional home, and already have placed three people. Two of them got saved. One's getting baptized today, James Bird over here, right? Yeah. And can I just tell you, there's a move happening right now, y'all, and it's off the chain. So on your way out, make sure when you say bye to Dexter, you give that guy a big hug. He told me this morning, he said, man, Tom, I couldn't have a better life. This is the best job I've ever had. Shelly tells me that every single time I see her, best job in the world. It's tight. What's up, Priscilla? All right, let me get back to this. My bad. Are you consistent? This is another check. This one's hard. Are you consistent with your colleagues as consistent? As, uh, I'm sorry. Are you consistent with your attitude towards your colleagues and your boss the same with your wife? Chill, Susie. Did you hear her? Come on, Tom. Come on. Is your consistency with strangers and your character towards them the same as with your children? This is a trustworthiness. Everybody can measure your trustworthiness by how consistent you are. Let me tell you about a guy I love, Josh Ellig, right here. I have never seen this man late to work. He's the most consistent man on coming into work. And one time, he called me up and said, I have a doctor's appointment this Thursday. I'm going to be late. I didn't listen to him. I totally forgot. That Thursday came, and I showed up five minutes late, 9.05. And I looked at the parking lot, and there was no car in the parking lot for Josh Ellick. I seriously thought, he's dead. There's no way. I did. I called him up, and what did I say? I said, are you okay? Is everything? Yeah, are you okay? What's going on? He said, Tom, I told you. I'm at a doctor's appointment. But I trust to see him here every morning on time because of his consistency. Are you inconsistent in your life? This is a check. Are you trustworthy? The reason why I'm going through this list is because you are called to be trustworthy. In fact, Scripture says this, it's better to have a good name than riches. If you have your Bible, Proverbs chapter 22. Is that what I told you? Yeah. That's a great verse. I knew that was wrong. I think I have dyslexia. I'm pretty sure it's 1122. But that's a great verse. He who loves purity of heart and has grace on his lips, the king will be his friend. Amen. <laughs> that was funny of me. I got dyslexia, I swear. Proverbs eleven twenty two. I believe, is what it is. No, nah, it's not. I'm just making things up, y'all. Somewhere in the book of Proverbs. <laughs> I don't know how I got that so wrong, Priscilla. But thank you, dude. It says, man. A, oh, 22, 1. 20, oh, 22, 1, Priscilla. Pull that up. Proverbs 22, 1. <laughs> A good name is to be chosen. Rather than great riches, loving favor rather than silver and gold. Scripture says, did you know that having your name trustworthy and good is better than having money? I don't know if we all agree to that. Some of us have a bigger pursuit of getting money than we do about having a good reputation. Some of us are willing to take a little lie and a little cheat and a little steal just so we could get ahead financially, not recognizing that your reputation is a lot more important. Are you trustworthy? This is your check. So the question is, I asked you all those questions. <laughs> that was stupid. The question is, how do you become trustworthy in these areas? 
Because I'm going to be honest with you, I read this book yesterday. I read an entire book in one day. Isn't that impressive? That book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Daniel right here told me we're at breakfast. He says, you got to read that book. And it was like the third time he told me, so I said, okay, I'm going to read that book. And in the beginning of that book, I had a great story, Al Capone. Al Capone thought that he was a good guy. You guys know what Al Capone did? He killed, still to destroy people, man. Him and Satan were best friends. And he said, this is what I get for doing the charitable work I did. There's another man. He was a, just killed a cop, ran into a restaurant. He got handcuffed and arrested. And he's going to the execution chair after trial. And he says, this is what I get for being a kind-hearted man. I did a trust check, and the truth is the majority of us in this room probably validated our trustworthiness. Majority of us thought, I'm pretty good with my word, but I want to be someone who's a little bit more critical about who I am. I'm going to encourage you. You need to be a little bit more critical about who you are. How many of you guys know you're great? You guys are great. But how many of you guys know you got some work to do? Anyone in this place? Come on. And I know there's more than that. All the rest of y'all. Mr. Jesse, I see you back there not raising your hand. You need some work too, right, brother? <laughs> Mr. Jesse just stone cold me, man. Oh, my bad, Jesse. You intimidate me. So how do you become trustworthy? Well, I got a great illustration. I need this. Is there any coffee in that cup? There is? Okay. Forget it. I don't want your cup. Trustworthiness is gained very slowly. You got an empty cup? Who's got an empty cup in here? You got chug, 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 chug. Thank you, Micah. Keep chugging, dude. <laughs> oh, hey! You got two cups, you dork. <laughs> You're gonna be buzzing here in a minute, dude. <laughs> How do you gain trust? I got a side note I gotta cover really quick too in a minute, but we're just gonna get through this. How do you gain trust? Some of y'all got bad words. Some of y'all are no good in your word. Some of y'all actions, people don't trust you. You don't even know it because they've been watching you. I, I, I don't, did you hear that too? Yeah. Okay. I thought maybe I had a hearing aid. I, didn't, I forgot about it or something. That was weird. Hey, listen, some of y'all got actions you've been performing and people have been watching you and you don't even know how little trust people got in you. How many of you guys know people are watching you? They are. I want, I want to make this clear. You are not alone. You are not alone. Literally, man, I, me and Mike a long time did this. This is a sick thing. I just want you to know, though, this really happened. There was an old worship leader that we knew. He, he was a great guy. We saw him and his wife at Kroger sitting down, and drinking wine, talking. And we just didn't want to talk to him. So you know what we did? We sat in another chair, and we watched him. <laughs> And we weren't being creeps. We just wanted to sit down and have a conversation. But the entire time we sat there, we watched them. You're being watched. Not once. To this day, David Cho doesn't know. We just watched him drink wine with his wife and have a good time. It was the creepiest thing we've probably ever done. All right? I just want you to know that. But you never know who's watching. I want you to know your actions are being seen. One time I was coming into church. I was late for a 9 o'clock prayer. And Sylvia was behind me. I didn't know it. And there was a red light. Well, there was a yellow light. It wasn't quite red <laughs> when I saw it. I always started there, all right? <laughs> and I blew through that thing, didn't I, Sylvia? And I took that corner and I sped up. Whoa. Got down Boulevard. I was whipping it like I was one of the drug dealers out there, man. I was like, no worries. I pull up to the church. I walk in, and Sylvia, the first thing she says, she says, how about that integrity, Pastor Tommy? Your actions are being watched by people. Some of y'all don't even know that your trust bucket, your trust fund is empty. Because what you do in your personal life, what you do in secret, it is all about your trust. Are you trustworthy? And some of us don't know it, but you will know how trustworthy you are by looking at your secret life. More than what people put trust in you, your secret life. And this is how trust is gained. Trust is gained in droplets. You say you're going to be on time, and you show up on time. You say, you know what? You make a covenant like Job. Never with my eyes while I look upon another woman. And you make that vow, and you don't look at that woman who walks by you, man. 
Women, don't think for a second, I don't think you got the same problems, all right? I'm just using men. You say, you know what? I will help you move. (laughs) (laughs) And you show up and actually help move. You make a vow in your marriage. When things get tough, I'm going to stick to it. You make that vow, and the things get a little bit tough, and you stick to it. And your trustworthiness is gained in droplets. And for some of y'all, you guys have been working out really hard. My, my brother, Adili, Adili Nagao, he, he's one of the most on-time people I've ever met in my life. He has this phrase that my kids now put on me all the time, and I hate it. He says, if you're five minutes early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. If you're late, it's unacceptable. adili has got a lot of trust in my bank when it comes to time. And over time, you start gaining this trust fund. You start banking out. And this is where we all want to be, people that everybody could trust our character. We want that. Everyone else would go, man, I want to be trusted. And so what we have is this trust fund of all these millions of actions that you do every day. Now, this is kind of on the side, because so we're going to talk about this with the Lord, but how many of you guys have recognized something that trust is gained in droplets, but wasted in buckets? You guys ever heard that before? Trust is gained in droplets. It takes time. Your word the first time is okay, but after a hundred times, then I know it's good. But once you start breaking that promise, man, what happens? All that trust starts going out. I'm going to pour this right here, Micah. Be careful. That time I tell my wife, I'm coming home on time today, baby. I promise you it's going to make it. And I show up two hours later. All those other times don't matter. It's pouring out. And your trust fund goes down. The only way, I just want to make this clear, the only way to become a trustworthy person is to continue to pour in and as few times as possible, don't let it pour out. That means let your no's be no's. That means let your yes be yes. That means it's not one time or two times you didn't look at the person who you're lusting after. It means every time you say, no, I'm not going to do it. Men, women, it takes one time at looking at porn for all that commitment to go down the drain. Recognize that your trust gets thrown out, but it's not just with men. And this is where things are a little scary, a little serious. We talked about having trust with men, but how do you have trustworthiness with God? How do you get trustworthiness with God? Now, I want to step back to a skip to note. You need to hear this really quick. Paul the Apostle had zero trust. Oh, man, I almost spilled my coffee. Paul the Apostle had zero trust. He was killing Christians, and none of the Christians wanted them to be around. And it says this in Acts chapter 6, I believe. Acts chapter 9, verse 26, it says, When Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. Some of us want people to trust us, but you don't have the reputation to be trusted. Paul, for years, had to regain that trust. How many of you guys are thankful that he did? He wrote the majority of the New Testament. Isn't that good news? You have a journey ahead of you. If your trust fund is empty, you got to figure out how to start getting consistent. And consistency doesn't happen by a few effort. Consistency happens because of a change of character. You and I have to have a change of character if you want to be trusted. And if you want to be trusted from the Lord, it is the same measurement. Can God trust you? I love this one. How many of you guys know he's giving you forgiveness? How many of you guys are so thankful that he's giving you forgiveness? Anyone in this place, man? Yeah, yeah. Hands raised, almost clapped. I saw that. Man, I love forgiveness. And this is what's cool about forgiveness. He's trusted you with forgiveness. He's given it to you. He said, you don't even have to prove that you're trustworthy. I will give this to you. But then you know what he says later on in scriptures? He says, listen, if you can't forgive others, then I will take my forgiveness from you. What? He's trusted you with forgiveness. And let me make this clear what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is having your sins wiped away so that you can speak to the Father and sit with the Father and be in his presence and receive his rewards. Forgiveness is not guilt conscious being cleared. Forgiveness is being restored back to what he purposed you for. And he says, if you can't handle that because someone, you know, know, there's a parable. I'm not going to read it. There's a parable. He says, man, there's this guy had a huge debt. 
And it says the king forgave him of the debt. And that same guy went and held the debts over other people and didn't forgive them. You know what the king says when he sees them? He says, I forgave you and you can't. I'm going to torture you until I get every penny back. That parable was to you and I. You got to be trusted with what God's given you. He's given you forgiveness. Ooh. This is no longer about how bitter or how mean they were to you. This is about God. If you've given me forgiveness, then I will give forgiveness. Now, let's go a little bit further. Can God trust you with not just forgiveness, but with his word? How many of you guys know God's word is good? And all the time God's word is? That's right. That's not how it goes, but whatever. You've been getting... Man, okay. Man, where's the Bible at? Give me a Bible. Give me a Bible. Someone got a Bible? Who's got a Bible? I didn't thank you. You're the best. Thank you. Great shirt. The king is coming. I love that. Some of you are all saying, God, I want to hear you more. And he's saying, I trust you with my word every day, and you ain't in it. How am I going to give you my vocal word? What's your trust look like with God? Are you lining up with what he's given you? I want to just talk about this Bible for a second. Are you in this thing? He's given you his holy word. People have bled and died over this book. People, uh, there's these stories we read. Thank you. There's these stories we read of these, these churches in the underground in China and North Korea. And it says that they would take a scripture and they'd rip a page out and they would memorize that scripture because they knew how dear and important it was that God gave them the word of God. And they'd hang on to that knowing that if they got caught with that page, it could be their life. And you and I, right? We got God's word. We're like, oh, I just didn't get it today. You know, I woke up late. It's tired. The game was on. The Pittsburgh Steelers were winning again. It made me mad. <laughs> Man could dream. <laughs> How do you become trustworthy with God? The answer is real simple. I'm going to read this scripture, Matthew 25. I'm going to just read this to you real quick. Matthew 25, verse 14. God gives us quick parable. That's what he says. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, and to each according to his own ability. Everyone say ability. ability. And immediately he went out on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise he would receive two, gain two more also. But he who received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he had received five talents, came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. How many of you guys want to hear those words? Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Verse 22, he also had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I've gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money in, with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. That's what he says in verse 28. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from whom who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm going to land on this scripture, and I'm going to talk about the easiest way to get God's trust. This scripture puts God in a really crazy light. He says, I've given to you to your ability. How many of you guys know God didn't give you more than you can handle? 
He says, I give to each for their ability. That means everything you have, God has trusted you by what he's seen in you already. And it says when he came back, he saw that there was one guy who had what God gave to him and didn't use it. He was untrustworthy. What do you have that God's given to you that you're not showing that you're trustworthy with? Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your relationship. Maybe it's your alone time. Maybe it's your consumption of entertainment. What is it that you have that the Lord's given to you and you are not using? He says, man, because the guy I gave one to, he had the ability to do something great. I knew his ability, but because he didn't do it, I gave his gifting to somebody else. Did you know that God will take someone else's gifting and give it to you because they were irresponsible with it? Whoa. Did you know God will give you even more than you have the ability for once he sees your ability with what he's given to you? Some of y'all are going, man, I want God to do miracles in my life. And the Lord's looking at you going, well, why don't you do the miracle of showing up on time? Now, why don't you do the miracle of getting in your word and actually living it out? Some of us are going, God, I want a greater intensity of your love. He's going, but what are you doing with what I've given you already? Man, those who are faithful with the little things, he says, I will give them much. You have a trust account with the Lord. And literally, the amount that he gives you is based on that trust account. Are you trustworthy with the Lord? We started this sermon real simply. Real simply. How can you measure your trustworthiness? What's your word look like? I used to do this with the Lord all the time. <laughs> I'd go to school. I was really bad at school. I wasn't bad at school. I was lazy. I'd get into a test, and I would, I would, I would ask this question. To, or I'd say this to the Lord. I'd say, God, if you help me with this test, I'll never sin again. Did anyone ever do that? How many know I was a liar? God is looking for people he can trust. Are you trustworthy? What's your word look like? What kind of actions do you perform when no one else is looking? Now, listen, this is the crazy thing about men. And I think we could all agree to this. How many of you guys have trusted someone who ended up not being trustworthy? You could fool men. But the problem with God is you can't fool him. And he really is banking on whether or not you're a dependable, reliable servant. And he's saying, I'm giving to you. What are you going to do with it? And there's these stories in the Bible, stories like, like Saul. He was given the entire kingdom of Israel, but he didn't trust the Lord. And because he didn't trust the Lord, the Lord said, well, then I'm taking it from you. And there's this idea that I bought into that forgiveness meant restoration of trust. And that's not true. And let me just explain to you what I mean by that. Some of us have been really wronged in this room. And you wrestle with the idea of how do I forgive them and I can't trust them. And we've done this thing where we marry trust and forgiveness together. But that's not real and this is the perfect example. I trust the mechanic with my car, not with my kids. Why? He didn't do anything wrong to me. He didn't mess with my kids. He just has nothing in the bank. And it's the same thing with you and the Lord. Forgiveness and trust are not tied together. He will wipe your debt away, but it doesn't say that he'll put money in your bank. You get what I'm saying? Does that analogy make sense? You've got to, day by day, say, Lord, I'm going to get my word today because you give me your word. And if you never speak to me, God, it doesn't matter. Every day, I'm going to get my word. Lord, I'm going to stay committed. That if that person walks by and lust is in my heart, God, I'm going, to sh I'm going to close my eyes. I would rather close my eyes in public than lust, God. I'm going to be committed to you. I'm going to build my trust in this, Father. You know, Lord, I, I, I keep making these commitments to people, but I'm going to decide today, Father, I'm going to say no where I can't make the commitment. Let's go even further. James says don't even commit about tomorrow because it's dangerous. You're going to end up being a liar. God, I'm going to guard my word. And day by day, if you and I could be people who say, God, I want to earn your trust. I want to be with you. Eventually, God will look at you and go, you know what? You've been so faithful with what I've given you that this guy over here who wasn't faithful 
and the calling that he had and the anointing that he had and the ability that he had and all the things that I gave him. You're so faithful. You know, you're so faithful, Micah. You're so faithful, Bernita. You're so faithful that I'm going to give you what they had. You know, you're so faithful with my word. And I, and, and I have this prophet over here. I keep talking to him, but he won't say what I tell him to say. So I'm going to give you prophecy because I see you in my word. Oh, man, you trust me. You put your trust in me. This is, this is really the key, by the way, to getting God to trust you. It's first putting your trust in him. Saying, God, I trust you. I know you're my provider. God, I want to trust you. You're my provider. He says, oh, if you trust me, then I could pour some more out on you. I could pour more out on you. See, I, I, here's the deal. I think we got a lot of forgiven Christians who have empty cups. And God has no bank in you. He's going, yeah, I forgive you every day. I'm watching you every day. Every day, I'm forgiving you. I'm faithful. If you confess your sins, I will forgive you. But he says, but don't you know I got more than just forgiveness for you? I got things that are beyond your wildest dreams. You read the Bible and you see the children of God. I mean, Paul, Paul's crazy. He's doing miracles. Even his own rag, right? Hey, where's a rag at? He, Susie's got a diaper in here. Even his own rags, right? People would, Paul would touch them and he was so anointed that people who would touch the rag that he touched would be healed. That's trust. God said, I put my name on that man. But it's your day-to-day -day walk. There's a greater place in your relationship with God. There's a greater place in your anointing. I just want to say this. There are things that God gave to other people that he will bless you with because of your faithfulness every single day. I said this earlier, and this really is my close. If you want God to trust you, you're not going to be consistent in your Bible unless first you trust that God's going to speak to you through it. You're not going to be consistent in your word with the Lord unless you trust that the Lord is actually really watching your word. The greatest trust that you'll ever have in the bank with God is first looking to him and saying, God, I trust you first and foremost. You're the forgiver of my sins. You've given me forgiveness. I will deliver forgiveness. You've given me your word. I trust that your word is good. I will dance upon that word, God. God, I trust Jesus that you're my provider. I'm not going to stress out about everything else. You're my provider. I put my trust in you, Jesus. I trust that you're my deliverer. I trust that you are my savior. I trust, God, that you're the deliverer of my sins and the deliverer from my enemies. I, deliver, I trust that you're my peace and my joy. Amen. And as you start investing your trust in him, he sees a wise servant. Well, then let me trust you with what I have. If you're in this place today, and I'm just going to go into right into a salvation call because I'm not going to lie. I want to get into these baptisms and I want to get into this baby dedication and I want to get into the new members class, all right? If you're in this place today and you go, man, my trust fund is empty with God. Like, I'm realizing there's no reason for him to trust me. I haven't built anything. Every day I dump out my cup again and ask him, God, will you make me pure? And you're going, man, I want to have trust. I want God to trust me again. Father, help me trust you. Help me be trustworthy. If you're in this place, can we just do something? Bow your heads. Bow your heads. Because I know people get shy. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Get alone for a second. If you're in this place, this is going to be real quick. And you're going, man, I, I need my trust fund to be refilled. I need, I need help getting consistent. I need help being true to my word. Let my yes be yes and my no be no. I, I need to be someone who trusts the Lord when, even when I don't see it happening, that I go, you know what, God, I'm going to rely on you and become trustworthy with your word, God. I need to be someone who actually gets in the Bible. If you're in this place, you just, I'm just going to do a quick prayer over you. You're not going to stand up. And you're in this place, you go, man, I need help with my trust fund with the Lord. I did a check today, and I don't feel like I'm real trustworthy with the Lord. And today, you want to start that journey. I want you to raise your hand up real high. I'm going to pray over you. Keep those hands up all over this place. Come on. Father, you see these hands, Jesus. Father, I pray right now, God, that you don't just give us a, a, a trust freely, that you put us in position, Jesus, to walk out what you've called us to do. That, Jesus, you put us in position today, Father, to walk out these 
small little things, God, these droplets, God. God, whatever's in our way, Father, if God, we forget to read our Bible, I pray that you just put on our heart heavy. Holy Spirit, bring conviction in our lives. Father, we've been, we've been so casual with our word. We've been gossipers and slams. God, I pray right now, Father, conviction of the Holy Spirit. We want your trust, Jesus. So, Father, I pray over each one of these hands, God, that you would just convict Holy Spirit, that you would remind them and remind them and remind them over and over and over again, God. I pray, God, that you take special attention of each one of these hands that are raised up, that when they're in their secret place, that their character, God, would be trustworthy for your great works. Amen. We hope you enjoyed today's sermon. Once again, if you'd like to support this ministry, log on to www.dreamcenterchurch.com where every dollar advances the kingdom of God. Until next time, be blessed and go do the great things God has called you to do.